Hi folks, this is a Daytron Neo. It is one of the coolest CNC machines out there for a whole bunch of reasons that we will get into. Daytron reached out and asked if we wanted to spend about six months with one of their machines researching and creating feeds and speeds recipes for our new speeds and feed service, Proven Cut. And we've had a ton of fun getting to know the machine and using the machine. And I really love the machine for some reasons that other machine tool builders should pay attention to. The first is the control, they call Next, the way it has a user interface, the way it has a built-in camera system, and the ability to use draw fingers for probing. The machine itself has a built-in Renishaw probe, but it very much reminds me of what, say, Apple or Tesla did when they really reinvented the way we use phones or cars with just a much more natural technology interface for the 21st century. And if there really is one that I'll miss from this machine, it is just the fact that the next control is how all CNC machine controls should be, period. It's a really impressive machine, especially for its size. They're actually pretty heavy machines. Daytron is a big fan of using uh, materials like granite or the mineral granite that give them really good rigidity and thermal stability. And what's awesome is that it will fit through uh, most man doors, but it has a really impressive X and Y travel range, again, given the footprint of the machine. 40,000 RPM spindle, and this thing is built for high speed or adaptive machining tool pass. The kinematics, the acceleration, watching this machine move around is just absolutely mind blowing. We had first seen them at some of the trade shows and it really caught your eye. And it's my opinion that they're also a little bit misunderstood. When these have come up in conversations, many people seem to compare them to something like a Speedio, a Robo Drill, sort of the mill tap machines. And yes, it's common to see high RPM spindles in both of those. And they're actually similar-ish price points, but they're really totally different machines. We've gotten to talk with a number of different folks that either use or own Neos, and here's the thing, they all love them. They're a great fit for, like Ed Kramer's using one in his garage as an R&D and a job shop machine. They're great for a lab situation. Uh, I believe Microsoft has a bunch in their prototyping lab where they need to have quick prototyping, they need to maybe have a higher turnover of folks that are coming in to use them, use the machines that aren't necessarily coming from a full-blown machine background. 2020 hasn't exactly panned out like anybody has thought. Uh, so while, yes, we did a ton of proven cut work, uh, we also, with Daytron's blessing, were able to make a bunch of PP&E equipment on the machine for hospitals and uh, schools and so forth. And that's actually one of the really cool takeaways that blows my mind about this machine. There is a film on the back of polycarbonate or Lexan, and we can regularly machine completely through the quarter inch Lexan and machine part way through the backside film. Absolutely awesome, uh, just on the capability and the rigidity and the accuracy of these machines. The whole tool changer setup is totally different. It includes a 24 station tool changer. Uh, the cover is up right now, but if we jog forward and Y, you'll see it closes to protect it from chips. And it touches off tools each time it does a tool change, which also gives you the benefit of built-in brake detection. They use an MQL system with, they say alcohol, we're actually using denatured ethanol, uh, which is really nice because there's no coolant. There's no mess left behind. It is sacrificial. So as soon as you push the coolant through there, it evaporates. It was a lot of paperwork to get our first drum of denatured ethanol, but it was actually only about 400 bucks and that will last a really long time. But I have to keep coming back to not only the control, but the accuracy of the machine. One of the first parts that we pulled off of it, we had used a face mill, which is like a half inch tool for, for the Neo, and we had faced some aluminum. We put it on our surface plate and it floated across. It formed that air gap barrier that you see out of like metrology tool and ground blocks that just, that makes you just smile. The machine is awesome at small holes. Uh, we've drilled small holes, we've interpolated small holes, and we have thread milled a whole bunch of ho small holes, including kind of a parity fixture plate for the Blondie Hacks male relay chain. We machined a, a small fixture plate with a bunch of 440 holes. It just handles it incredibly well. But there's one more thing that absolutely blew us away about using this machine, and it's the vacuum work holding. And we've used vacuum before. This vacuum system, totally different for some awesome reasons. It has a high volume pump mixed with this vacuum card, means it's generally speaking not susceptible to that issue that plagues so many vacuum systems, which is that when you cut through one section, you lose all your vacuum and your part flies off. Now the rules of vacuum still apply. We generally think of about 14 pounds per square inch. So 
once you get up to the say four inch by four inch or six inch by six inch, you've got a decent amount of work holding power. But what's amazing about this vacuum card stuff is it has some directionality to the actual paper. So you don't have to gasket like we used to. You can actually machine through certain areas in the center of that part and still maintain vacuum. But what's even cooler is that when you turn that vacuum pump on, it shows you how much vacuum pressure you have and you can set whatever you want to be the threshold in the next control. So let's say it goes to 70 and you don't want it to ever drop below 50. Well, as you machine through certain areas, you might start to lose a little bit of pressure, but you can let the next control know how little is acceptable and the machine will then pause if for whatever reason, we all had our vacuum parts fail before, you go below that. It's absolutely been a wonderful sort of surprise because we've heard so many good things about the Daytron, but we didn't really appreciate this until we started using it. And then we love the vacuum system too because when we want to switch from doing plate style work to traditional machining work, we just drop on one of the Saunders Machine Works plates that we make that has the mod vise on it, turn it on, we're good to go. We learned a lot about how to run higher RPM spindles or higher RPM machines on materials you don't often see, the stainless steels, steels, titanium. So we're looking forward to taking what we've learned on the Daytron and applying it to all sorts of different hobby CNC's, routers, and so forth, which we'll be sure to document in upcoming videos and over on Proven Cut. We want to give a big shout out to Daytron as a thank you for allowing us to have access to this machine. And again, if you want to see more, check out the folks that are out there using them. We'll throw some links in the video description. They're really pretty cool machines. Otherwise, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.